Hey guys, it's Layla from Ignite and in today's video I'll be addressing key themes from George Orwell's 1984 for those of you studying the Human Experience module. If you do like this content and you need further analysis on any of your HSC English texts, please check out our website. It's www.ignitehsc.com.au. We've got loads of analysis, practice questions, exemplar essays, notes on form and context, everything really you need to navigate through your HSC English studies. So I recommend you guys check it out. But for now, let's get into today's content. So I just want to frame my focus for today's video. I'll start off by giving you a key idea, a central concern of 1984, that being the notion of control. I'll then move through some evidence from 84, which provides examples of how control plays out in the text, and I'll analyze that evidence for you. If you're at a point now in your studies where you're drafting your exemplar essays and you're forming your body paragraphs, this video will facilitate your analysis and get you going to get those essays drafted before your trials or your HSC. Okay, so the central concern for today's video, as I mentioned, is this notion of control. And I think it's a really excellent point to discuss in your essays because control seems to be an enduring value that actually relates to our contemporary context. And as you may know, the human experience rubric is asking students to engage and reflect on a personal level with the ideas that are reflected in the text that they are studying. And I really like this image because I feel like that captures the enduring value of control as represented in 1984. So we've got, of course, the infamous quote, Big Brother is watching you, a motif throughout the text, which reflects the totalitarian modes of control to which Winston is subject. But also, of course, within Orwell's context, this notion that the individual is under the omnipresent control of the state and their will to survive is limited by that omnipresence of control. And here, of course, we have an image of Mark Zuckerberg. And when you think about it, our social media, our Google searches, all of that functions as another, I guess, omnipresent form of control in our contemporary society, as everything we do seems to be under surveillance. So that notion of control, of surveillance, and of potentially subsequent lack of autonomy in the, in the individual, which was framed within Orwell's time, carries through and can carries through and transcends to our contemporary world. So it's a nice, I guess, comparison to discuss the ever importance and the ongoing value of studying Orwell's text in light of notions of human experience. I guess control is of particular importance to the text because Orwell is interrogating the extent to which our ability to live and to fulfill our human experiences is enabled by a sense of autonomy and of agency, both of which are limited through the text, through Big Brothers and Goldstein's surveillance of Winston and their ability to control each of his movements and his thoughts and his ultimate submission by the end of the text. So that's how I guess control plays out as a sense concern within Orwell's novel. So now let's take a look at a central quote which reflects this notion of control and we'll analyze it together. So a quote reflective of the notion of control within the text is a helicopter skimmed down between the roofs hovered for an instant like a blue bottle and darted away again with the curving flight. So the movement of the helicopter, its movement above each of the individuals within Winston State, shows the use of technology as a form of ever-present control pervading the life of the individual. So the helicopter, it's skimming, its ability to, I guess, serve as a form of surveillance is also a contextual allusion to the time as developments in technology and the mastering of vehicles such as helicopters would have been a clear reminder for those reading the novel of elements of control within their own context. And we know that Orwell is writing this text as a form of a polemic novel, right? He is writing with the political intent to try and challenge our conceptions of control and a limited sense of autonomy which featured in his time. So that moment there would have rung alarm bells for his contemporary reader, but nevertheless it also speaks to our contemporary context in the ways that different forms of control function to continue to limit the thoughts of an individual in our current society. The next clause hovered for an instant like a blue bottle. The simile there like a blue bottle is symbolically alluding to the way the helicopter kind of is personified, right? It moves around, it stops, it takes an information and then it does 
darts away as though it never really existed and darted away again with a curving flight and the descriptive language there in the, in the curving flight shows how quickly and how skillfully in almost a surreptitious way the helicopter comes in surveys what's going on in the surroundings and then moves off with whatever information it's gained so that little moment there speaks to control speaks to surveillance and it also enables Orwell to comment on the ways in which the autonomy of the individual is subject to this broader control of the state. So putting that analysis into a paragraph. So what we've done, we've looked at the overarching value of control. You can, of course, manipulate that key concern in any specific way if you want to cater it to a particular idea you want to discuss in your essay. And of course, it's such a broad idea that it could be linked to multiple ideas that are raised in an essay question. For example, if you had a question on collective human experiences or challenges which arise in human experience, there are clear links to control that could be made in any of those questions. But then framing it in an actual body paragraph, so if you do have a paragraph based on this and you've selected that bit of evidence, this is how you could frame it within your body paragraph. So it reads here, Orwell's text interrogates the value of autonomy to one's human experience, right? Autonomy being your sense to be independent. And your ability to be independent is, of course, quashed because of the sense of control within the novel. Here, the simile of a blue bottle and darted away again with the curving flight highlights the mechanisms of the totalitarian regime as poisonous and omnipresent. And that's actually a really key point, right? Because the blue bottle has poison. It can sting, it can harm the individual. So to describe totalitarian control in this way is to enable Orwell to make a social comment about control in his time as a symbolically poisonous feat. Furthermore, Orwell's literary mode personifies the city itself, and that's right, the actual setting is conveyed as alive. Yes, there's this almost zoomorphic description there, as the blue bottle, as an animal, is used as anomalous with the city, but it brings to life these elements of control and how they function to, I guess, limit the life of the individual. As a live form of control engulfing powerless Winston, he is literally engulfed by these motifs of control which play out throughout the text. So that's how you could go about analysing a bit of evidence based on the notion of control. Let's have a look at another quote from the text. It was an act of self-hypnosis, a deliberate drowning of consciousness by means of rhythmic noise. So this quote here is speaking to the subhuman chanting of the BB sound, which functions as what we could call an oral motif or a late motif, L-E-I-T-M-O-T-I-F, which is the repetition of a particular sound throughout the text. So their subhuman utterance of that sound is symbolic for the manipulation and the subconscious of the individual being controlled by the modes of Big Brother throughout the text. If we look at this as well, the deliberate drowning, the plosive, you could say, or the dental repetition there, the harshness of those words emphasises the extent to which the subconscious of the individual is being controlled by means of the rhythmic noise. There's this hypnosis that is associated with the control of the state. So the first quote I gave you, I picked that one because that's speaking to the external setting of Big Brother, right? The external setting of the environment being that which can control the individual. Now we've moved beyond external setting within the subconscious of the individual, which is, of course, where the most powerful form of control takes place. The fact that the individual, because it's a form of self-hypnosis, that one is not actually conscious of the form of control to which they're being subject, which is what makes Orwell so alarmed. The fact that our agency and our autonomy is compromised by the forms of control to which the individual is subject. Okay, so taking that into account, this is how you could put it into an exemplar piece of analysis. The subhuman chanting of BB is an oral motif, or you could say late motif, which reinforces the manipulation of the individual. This presents Orwell's construction of autonomy as fundamental to one's experience, right? So if we're asking ourselves, what's the purpose of describing this in this way in the text? It's to make us aware of the inherent value of independence and autonomy in order to actually live one's human experience. Orwell is saying that we're not actually living in that post-war context because of these modes of control to which we are subject. The alliteration of deliberate drowning, and like I mentioned, because it's the repetition of the D, you could call that alliterate uh, use of dental sounds, alliteration of dental sounds, reinforces the absolute manipulation and regulation of individuals, forcing their submission to the forces of the party. Notice how agency and autonomy are quashed by the superseding elements of control in the text. 
As a result, human experience is controlled by the hands of the state. The individual and their independence are at the whims of broader senses of control within the text. All right, guys, to summarize the video, I hope you've gained an insight to some of the key overarching ideas to 1984, that being the notion of control and ways that you can construe that to link to different question types, be it the paradoxes of human experiences or the challenges or anomalies. And I hope now you've got a little bit of evidence to give you a kickstart on drafting up your paragraphs for your scaffolds. If you do like the content, like and subscribe to our channel. Put any comments if you've got questions about any of the material that's in here. And if you do want further assistance with your studies, visit our website because we have a plethora of information that will help you with all of your HSC English studies. Thanks again for watching guys and I really hope to see you in the next video. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. If you do like the content, subscribe to our channel and we'll have more videos coming your way. That's right guys, thanks for watching and please make sure you check out our online resource database. We've had a team of state rank achievers and heads of English put these together for you, covering everything from essay structures and examples all the way through to craft of writing and comprehension skills. So check them out at ignitehse.com.au and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.